this section, we will discuss Health Technology Assessment, or HTA. HTA considers many aspects of adoption of new technologies, of which economic evaluation is one component. HTA is a multidisciplinary exercise involving multiple types of experts and increasingly patient input and representation. What is a health technology? The International Network of Agencies for Health Technology Assessment defines a technology as any intervention that may be used to promote health, to prevent, diagnose, or treat disease, or for rehabilitation or long-term care. This includes the pharmaceuticals, devices, procedures, and organizational systems used in healthcare. Technology is an important driver of health costs. Older research has estimated that in the U.S., changes in technology are responsible for one to two-thirds of healthcare cost growth. Ensuring that only technologies which improve health are adopted can help to control costs. Spending on drugs as a proportion of healthcare budgets has also increased in recent years, with drugs accounting for 14% of healthcare spending in 2021. Technological innovations do not always provide health gains or good value for money. Some innovations can be game changers. These interventions may lead to massive changes in outcomes or prevent disease altogether. Examples of game-changing innovations could include penicillin, protease inhibitors, or vaccines. Examples of innovations that are of questionable value could include Me Too drugs, that is, a drug that is similar to one that already exists, may only have slight differences in side effect profile or minimal changes in efficacy, or drug-eluting stents. We will take a closer look at drug-eluting stents and their use in Ontario as an illustrative example. Stents are scaffolds placed into diseased coronary arteries to hold them open. Stents were originally bare metal, but drug-eluting stents, abbreviated DES, are coated with medicine that helps to prevent re-narrowing of the artery. In the early 2000s, DES were a new technology with promising health benefits. Early trials showed DES to be superior to bare metal stents, and they rapidly penetrated the American market. However, Later studies suggested that it was only the most severe patients who'd benefited from DES, and less sick patients did just as well with a cheaper bare metal stent or even pharmacotherapy alone. Funding of DES was initially limited in Ontario, and a field study began to gather more evidence. The decision to hold back on widespread adoption of DES and first gather more real-world data proved to be a positive one. If the technology had been adopted at similar rates to what were seen in the U.S., this would have added $20 million in costs. Now that we have seen an example of health technology assessment with drug-eluting stents, we shall look at the HTA process for drugs in Canada. There is a clearly defined pathway for reimbursement of drugs on provincial public formularies. The manufacturer submits an evidence package to Canada's HTA body, the Canadian Agency for Drugs and Technology and Health, or CADA. The evidence package contains multiple sections, including clinical evidence and economic evidence, including an economic evaluation and a budget impact analysis. Input from the public, patients, and patient groups is invited. A panel with a diverse range of experts and patient representatives considers the evidence package. CADF makes a funding recommendation to the provinces. All recommendations and reasoning can be found on the CADF website. Provinces will each make the final decision on when and how to reimburse. Price negotiations with manufacturers are managed by the Pan-Canadian Pharmaceutical Alliance, with this process usually taking place in parallel to the HTA review. Most countries with publicly financed healthcare systems have an HTA body that advises on reimbursement of drugs and technologies. They often provide different recommendations reflecting local contexts. This image shows the HTA bodies present in six countries and the different recommendations made for serafinib for the treatment of renal cell carcinoma. Sweden and France recommended reimbursement, while England, Scotland, Canada, and Australia did not. Non-drug technologies have less clearly defined paths, and they vary between provinces. We will review the process in Ontario as an example. Manufacturers can request reviews from the Ontario Health Technology Assessment Committee, OTAC. 
The image shows a recommendation provided by Ontario Health, informed by OTAC guidance regarding an orthotic device. Unlike the drug review process, the evidence package is not produced by the manufacturer, but internally by the relevant agency. Similar to the CADTH process, evidence packages are used to inform the recommendation and are made publicly available on the relevant website. The HTA body provides the recommendation, but the final funding decision is made by the Ministry of Health. Technologies may diffuse passively if particular tools or devices are preferred by clinicians and are adopted into practice without an HTA process. Hospitals may have pharmacy and therapeutic committees that make institutional decisions about devices used at their facility. What about HTA for interventions that are not drugs or devices? Economic evaluations can be conducted to inform decision-making, yet the specific decision-making bodies relevant for other interventions can be less clear than for drugs and devices, which have defined pathways and deliberative frameworks. Examples of non-drug or device interventions could include interventions that address social determinants of health, diet, or care delivery models, such as remote or virtual versus in-person. Such interventions have a less clear path to policymakers. Obtaining input data for clinical outcomes and costs may also be more challenging, as well as the ability to clearly define all relevant treatment comparators. Let's summarize what we've covered in this section on HTA. HTA is a multidisciplinary process that draws on different types of evidence, typically considering health outcomes, cost effectiveness, equity, budget impact, and implementation issues. The HTA process for drugs is clearly defined. Manufacturers submit to CADETH, who makes recommendations to provinces, who make the final reimbursement decision. HTA of devices is typically performed by provincial health agencies. Non-drug or device interventions have less clearly defined pathways for HTA, but economic evaluation of these interventions can still be used to support and inform policymaking. This concludes Section 1, Part 6. Please proceed to Part 7, Challenges and Equity in Health Economics.